Hi, Steven here from Core Electronics. Welcome back to the final video of our natural disaster sensor project using the microbit. In this section, we'll learn about making our receiver that will receive all the data being transmitted from our three microbit sensors. We have the wind sensor, we'll have a temperature sensor, and we have a seismic sensor. All that data will be sent to our receiver board where we can log it on the computer or plot our results or even export it to a CSV. So let's start by taking a look at what the board does. So right now we have it in temperature monitoring mode and it's displayed on plotted on the board itself. The same as being what's being measured by our temperature sensing board. And that's being transmitted over the radio onto the board itself. Now these have a range of about 70 meters. So um, obviously, probably um, not too necessary to transmit it over this sort of distance, but we could potentially put this somewhere far away and still be receiving this signal. If we change our mode, pressing a button will set it to our seismic sensor, which is this sensor here. So any earthquakes or motion under the board is transmitted to our receiving board where it's plotted. And if we change the mode again, then we change it to our wind sensor. Now our wind sensor, it's not very windy in here, so we'll have to simulate it. So our wind sensor transmission comes through every six seconds. So we're just going, so we spin the sensor, we see a measurements come through on the board and it's been plotted on the board. So let's take a look at our code that we're using. So even though these, um, even though we can only display the data from one source at a time on the, on the LEDs of the board itself, that data is coming through and being recorded over the serial monitor constantly from all sources. So let's take a look at what we, what we did to program the device first. First of all, we, on start, we set our radio group to one. We initialize a variable mode and text to zero, and we'll explain those in just a minute. And we start out by showing the string temp because that's the mode that we start up in. So when we push button A, we um, change the mode that's being displayed on the board. So we first set our mode to three, so it doesn't, it's not showing anything for the moment. And then we change our text mode up or down to be the mode that we're in, and then we set our mode to the same thing as text. So mode determines what the what's being plotted, and text determines what text is going to be scrolled. So we need to turn mode off, so to speak, for a moment, so it's not trying to plot over our scrolling text. So as our values come in, we plot them on our LEDs, determined by which mode we're set in. So constantly we're looking to receive radio signals. So we do that with the on radio received block. And because we sent a text string and a value, we want to receive a name and value. So the radio received block recognizes that there's going to be a string and then a numeric value afterwards, and it saves them as two different variables. So we Whenever we receive a signal, we're going to write the running time to the serial so we can log the time that the signals were received. And then we have some logic here to determine what source each of the values are coming from. So if the string is equal to seismic or temperature, then it will save the value that's behind it as seismic or temperature or wind respectively and then write it to serial so we'll be able to see it. So one of the great things about using make code for Windows, the Windows app, is that we can see our live data being collected by the device as a on a serial monitor. So while we're connected over USB, we have this option show data device. And this appears whenever you have any plot or serial write commands in your code. So as we can see here, 
as our data is coming in, they'll slowly appear and create more graphs that we can see. But we have our, first of all, we have our seismic data. So as I move my remote seismic sensor, the data is being transmitted across to our receiver where it's currently being plotted and it's showing up here in our scrolling bar, bar graph, the readings that I'm getting in real time off of our seismic center, sensor. And you notice that when I'm setting it down, it's stopping at 160. That's because it's not perfectly centered. So if the device was closer to center, then it would be a number closer to zero. Um, our next graph is our running time, which is just the time increasing in milliseconds since the receiver was powered on. We then have our wind readings, which come across every six seconds again, so we'd have to wait till we can get a reading off of our wind sensor. So once appeared, we've gotten 26 or 22 transmitted across and our bar graph has gone up to 22. And now it's transmitted again and gone back to one. And then finally we have our temperature values which are coming across as 20 degrees. So one of the cool things about plotting out all our data within MakeCode is that we can then export it to a CSV. So at the top of our screen, we have this export data link. And if we click that, it will export all of our data into a CSV file with headings for each data source. So we'd have a column for seismic, one for running time, and wind and temperature respectively. And you could use that data, that raw data, to really do some good analyzing on it. Say, um, remove the errors from your seismic sensor or compare the, compare the, the times that um, your temperature changed and whatnot. So that wraps up this tutorial on creating a natural disaster sensor project using the microbit and remote sensors. Thanks for watching.